According to a recent study by the American Psychological Association, 82% of Generation Z individuals aged between 18 and 25 years old, and 81% of Millennials aged between 26 and 43 years old, cited money as a significant source of stress. However, there's a reason you wouldn't expect. Listen to me. Imagine the long-awaited payday has finally arrived. All your hard work has paid off, and now you can enjoy the rewards you deserve. You feel entitled to pamper yourself with something special after so much effort. Maybe you'll indulge in a delicious meal, go out with friends for drinks, or even treat yourself to that new piece of clothing you've been wanting for so long. Whatever you decide to do, you know you deserve it and want to enjoy it a little, right? Instead of following the same old routine, make sure to follow this 7-step plan for payday to have full control over your finances and achieve financial freedom and independence. Surprisingly, 95% of people can't even get past the first step. If you buy things you don't need, soon you'll have to sell things you do need. In other words, overspending can have serious long-term consequences. Study and follow the plan explained in this video, and see how much more secure and empowered you feel when it comes to your money. Step 1. Deposit money into a checking account. Some people don't have their paychecks or work money deposited directly into their checking account. This can cause serious problems as you can easily lose sight of your money. Your salary is always a net income since the government has already deducted taxes and you may have contributed to a retirement fund. What's left is your net income, also known as liquid money. The problem arises when you receive this money in cash and need to deposit it yourself. It can be difficult to manage, but the importance of this step is immense. Two new videos are published every day, so not to miss out on valuable knowledge for your success. I strongly advise you to subscribe to this humble channel. Take the opportunity to like this video and leave a comment, thus helping to spread this content. Now, let's continue with the main theme. Step 2. Create an emergency cushion of 3,500 rays. This is enough to prevent minor problems from spiraling out of control when getting out of debt. When you receive your salary, mark on the calendar the dates you intend to save up to 3,500 raise as quickly as possible in a separate savings account. This money will be used as a small emergency fund in case something unexpected happens, such as a flat tire, car repairs, medical expenses, or if something breaks in your home. This money can prevent you from going into debt completely, or at least reduce the amount you need to borrow, depending on the emergency. The money problem that most negatively impacts mental health is the lack of savings for emergencies. This has a negative impact, with 57% of surveyed Americans reporting a significant impact on their mental health. It is absolutely vital that you save this as quickly as possible, as you and your money will be in danger if you don't. You may have heard that 100 reis or 200 reis was enough, but that's no longer true with inflation and rising prices. The minimum to get out of trouble now is 3,500 reis, which will help keep you safe and on track to build wealth. For your sake, keep this money in a separate savings account. First, because you should remember clearly that this money should not be used for anything other than an emergency. It's not a personal savings account but an emergency savings account. Secondly, you don't want to invest this money because it needs to be stable and liquid, meaning you need to be sure you can access this money when you need it. If you invest in the stock market and need the money when the market is down, your 3,500 raise can turn into just one reel, which would be a horrible feeling. If you don't already have a separate savings account, Open one today and focus on saving 3,500 raise from your salary as soon as possible. Put everything you can into the savings account until you reach that amount. Once you've reached that amount in the savings account, start allocating 10% of your money to this account. I'll explain this in more detail later on. So, keep watching. Step 3. Pay off your high interest debts. There are generally five main types of debts that anyone has, credit cards, payday loans, student loans, medical loans, and mortgages. However, only credit cards and payday loans often have very high interest rates and are the first you should eliminate. These are the debts that are literally stealing any wealth you deserve since they usually have average interest rates of 18%. This, considering the American reality, 
In Brazil, this rate can be much higher. So, the only people getting richer are those receiving these interest rates, while you remain in debt. You never want to owe money you can't afford to pay. Basically, I'm against debt. I believe the average individual would lead a much happier life if they completely avoided it. They should avoid credit card debt. I mean, there's no reason in the world to pay 18% for money. I can't make money paying 18% interest. So why should people on the street do that? Avoid debt. If you have savings, and it's a good idea to have them, buy indexed funds and buy every month. Now, you may feel that paying off your debts should be the second step after what you do with your salary, but here's the problem. Imagine you pay off your debts, but then an emergency arises. It could be that you've almost paid off your debts, but now you're again drowning in debt because you didn't have emergency savings to protect you. This starts the vicious cycle again. So, pay the minimum amount of debts while saving for emergencies. Only after saving at least 3,500 reis, start aggressively paying off your high-interest debts. The hardest part, however, is staying away from your credit card. Once you've paid off the debt, for example, suppose you get paid and forget to save a little extra money for fuel. This causes you to resort to your credit card to fill up the tank, completely nullifying the purpose of paying off your credit card debt. The best way to avoid this is to fill up the tank as soon as you receive it. It doesn't matter if the tank is full or empty. Step 4. Invest your money. Controlling the cost of living, simplifying, and saving money is the secret. The amount of money I had was small, but I always understood my earnings and invested. And well, you know, if you live long enough, you end up getting rich. I always joke that since my birth, I was programmed to allocate capital, whatever my natural predisposition. I constantly worked on it, and I believe I worked even harder than anyone else. It doesn't need to be hard to get rich. People suffer from lack of knowledge, and that's what I want to teach you here today in this video. That's why it's extremely important that you stay until the end because the best steps are yet to come. After saving 3,500 reis and getting rid of high interest debts, it's time to start investing. Initially, you should invest 15% of your earnings. In other words, for every one real you earn, 15 cents go towards investment. There are various ways to invest, depending on your risk tolerance. As a starting point, you should open a separate checking account for any investment you wish to make. This way, when you receive your salary, 15% of your earnings will be automatically transferred to this account, ensuring it's ready to be invested and not accidentally spent on something unnecessary. After that, you have several options. Option number one is risk aversion and guaranteed returns. A safe option that also offers guaranteed returns is paying off your low-interest debts, excluding credit cards and payday loans. Paying off a lower-interest debt, such as a student loan at 5% per year, effectively provides a return on investment of 5% since you no longer have to pay that amount to anyone, effectively recovering that amount. Option number two involves higher risk and higher returns. If you have tolerance to bear higher risk, consider investing in the stock market. Consistently buy a low-cost indexed fund, keep buying in good and bad times, especially in bad times. Good companies will always thrive over time. Simply buy an index fund and don't worry about headlines or stocks. Instead of creating a separate checking account, consider creating a brokerage account that automatically invests a portion of your weekly or monthly salary depending on the frequency of your pay. Inform the broker the amount you want to invest, which is 15% of your salary, and the money will be automatically invested without you having to do anything. This allows you to not even realize that money is being invested, as it goes directly into the stock market, creating another investment account that works passively to increase your wealth. Call your bank or create an online brokerage account and request that the bank set up automated monthly purchases of the index fund. Alternatively, you can set up automated monthly purchases online yourself. Watch how your money grows over the years. If you're not a professional investor, this is the best way to invest your money in the long term. If there's one lesson you should remember from this video, it's to invest monthly for the next 20, 30, or 40 years. Don't overthink, just do it. If your intention is to build wealth and retire safely, any honest banker will tell you that this is an excellent solution for most people. Step 5. 
increase your savings. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, it's important to have some money on hand. Definitely don't want to have a maxed out credit card or anything like that. Avoid high interest debt and make sure to have a small reserve of cash for emergencies. Having some money on hand gives you the freedom and peace of mind to weather tough times without falling into the debt trap. While allocating 15% of your money to invest, you should also simultaneously save 10% of your money to further increase your emergency fund. You should save between 3 and 6 months of expenses. So, if you spend 3,000 raise per month, you want to have a minimum of 9,000 raise in your savings account just as a precaution. A useful rule of thumb for knowing how many months of expenses you should save is as follows. If you're single or living with someone, usually three months are enough. If you have a family, aim for six months as it's a safer option. If you really want to protect yourself, you can go beyond six months, but try to keep it below 12 months as this becomes counterproductive to inflation. Having this fund will protect you from emergencies, both minor and major, ensuring you come out of them unscathed. Once you've reached this stage, congratulate yourself as it's a great achievement. You're paying off your debts in the right order, saving and investing. You're part of the 5% of people on the path to financial abundance. Step 6. Spend on the right things. The 5% of people set goals and have disproportionately more success in their lives than the other 95%. Did you know that the 5% of people make a budget, while the 95% don't? Making a budget is crucial to taking control of your financial future. It's not about how much money you make, but rather how you manage the money you have. By budgeting, you can avoid debt, save, and invest wisely. Finally, financial success and security. So, join the 5% of people who take control of their finances, and you'll be on the path to financial freedom. There are two main spending points people have, needs and wants. Priority should always be your needs. So, after saving 3,500 raise for emergencies, paying off your higher interest debts, and now keeping 10% and investing 15%, you should have approximately 75% of your remaining salary. The hardest part is figuring out how to use the rest of that money. Firstly, you need to understand what is a need and what is a want. Although this may seem like common sense, most people's financial situation says otherwise. A need is something you require to function, and a want is something you can do without. Difficulty arises in the overlap between the two. For example, you need a car to get to work, but you don't need the latest model Mercedes for that. You need a phone for everyday use, but you don't need the latest iPhone with the most expensive plan. It's always helpful to remind yourself why you need an item. Buy what you need and avoid wants until you achieve financial stability, or better yet, financial independence. Step 7. Monitor your spending. I believe spending more than 100% of your earnings leads to all sorts of problems. I receive letters from people every day who have experienced these problems. You need to monitor how much of the 75% of your net earnings you spend so as not to spend more than you earn. The only way to ensure you don't exceed your earnings is with a budget. Many people are afraid to make a budget because they feel it's too restrictive. Firstly, when you make a budget, it's not a straitjacket. It's you who decides what to do. It's a safety net that prevents you from straying off course. The truth is that it only feels that way because you have the wrong mindset. Here's how to change that. You need to realize that having control over your money, getting out of debt, creating an amazing life for yourself and your family, or achieving independence and financial freedom is the ultimate goal of the budget. It's not a punishment, but rather a guide for entertainment. A budget should make you feel free rather than restricted because you give yourself permission to spend on this and that. What's the simplest way to make a budget? Grab a pen and paper or open a notes app on your phone and list your spending categories. Here are the most common spending categories in everyone's budget. You can pause and jot them down. The first is housing, such as rent or mortgage payments. Next comes food expenses, like groceries and eating out. Then transportation, including car payments, gas, maintenance, and public transportation. Next are insurances, like health, auto, and home. Then debt payments, like credit cards and loans. Entertainment is another category, like movies, concerts, and hobbies. Next, personal care, like haircuts and personal hygiene items. 
Clothing and accessories come after, followed by gifts and donations. And then, travel. Now, think about how much you spend in each category. Write it down and stay within that limit, monitoring the amount spent after each purchase to get a sense of the freedom provided by the budget. Utilize free online resources like budgeting apps. These are the seven steps on what to do with your money when you receive your paycheck. It became evident to me that you want to become a standout individual, distancing yourself light years ahead of others, further enhancing your financial intelligence. After all, you've made it to this point in the video, haven't you? So, for that to happen, all you need to do is click on one of these two videos on your screen and watch the next content, which was crafted with great dedication especially for you. Let's go! Take advantage as it's free, and thank you very much for your presence. I can't believe you haven't clicked yet. After all, there are only three seconds left. Three, two inch.